time to cut off all communication with the outside world. Dust off your old VCR and gather your collection of mixtapes. Then tease those bangs, put on your favorite pair of leg warmers. The nostalgia bug has bitten and we are here to scratch the itch. I'm Odell. I'm Erin. It's time to go back where we belong. Hello, peeps. What's going on? <laughs> I love your delays, like you're on a time delay. In case you say something, like at the Oscars, where they put it on a time delay, in case you say something bad that they can they have a heads up, they can bleep out. I feel like that's you. <laughs> See, or you could... Or you could be me and just cut them off anyway. <laughs> All your ass out. Yeah, I have the problem of when a thought enters my mind, if I don't say it immediately, then it just goes away. So I have to get it out. It's that I think I have early onset dementia or something. Uh, I hope not. Knock on wood. Don't want that. <laughs> Today, we are traveling back to 1995. And while I love my 80s, absolutely love the 80s, like forever and always, my favorite decade ever. But I found that when I go back to the 90s, I remember more of this stuff clearly, obviously, because it happened more recently, still 30 years ago. But what's right? But I know. Because the, like 90, 94 to 97 were like the best years for me. Cause that's when I was at Oregon state and I met all of my really good friends. And so today's movie, which is seven, which I love because it's also episode seven, seven on seven. I know. And we didn't even like when I picked the movie, no, it was one of the three movies that popped up and I picked it and then didn't realize until today. Anyway, so we're traveling back to September of 1995. Do you know what you were doing in September of <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> meant to be <laughs> just a preview <laughs> love it well this was also my junior year of college mm -hmm. uh, my second junior year really if you go by years because I was in college for five years instead of just the four right um but we started, we were on the quarter system, so we didn't start college until the end of September. But oh. I remember this clearly, the end of September that year, I was back at Oregon State. I was assisting with campus tours for people who were in our dorm, because I'd been there a year already. Uh -huh. And this is where I first hung out with my one of my besties, Lisa. Oh, because yeah. she, had, she had moved into the dorm the year before, but then we were both on like the hall council or something um, together. And so we were doing the tours together and we just immediately clicked and have been best friends ever She's since. She's a good one. Yes. How funny that we both met like our, I know our little soul partners <laughs> in September our of 95. Yeah. Special time. Obviously, until you and I met each other. And then, I mean, right. We were like, then there the was surrogate. some stiff competition. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, a few things that were happening around the world at this time. Seven, our movie today, actually had its premiere in New York City on September 15th. So, a week before 
the okay. worldwide or the nationwide premiere and then open nationally on the 22nd. On September 21st, the day before our movie opened, the Hindu milk miracle occurred. Did oh. you hear about this? This was kind no. of crazy. So statues of the Hindu god Ganesh began drinking milk when spoonfuls of milk were placed near their mouths. What? And I'm trying to think, how does this happen? Did so, Was someone <sighs> sitting behind the statue? I'm imagining they had drilled a hole in the mouth and they were standing behind it with a straw and they were sucking it so the milk was going into the statue. I mean, did it... What? I know. Like, did it just soak into the stone? Right. How do they know that it was drinking it? Because I just imagine little statue lips going... <laughs> I know. <laughs> like cats. Because then the headline milk. would be more like... The statues are alive. Right. Statues have tongues and they're drinking milk. I don't milk. understand. And why milk? Like, did they try other liquids? Did they hold up a Chianti? Like a Coca-Cola? <laughs> Chianti? <laughs> I'm trying to go fancy. I mean, <laughs> and then I go for Coke. I don't, I don't understand. Like, all of them did? I guess. Like it was around. What do they think it was? Like, what what did that signify to them? Anything? Or did they just like, oh, well, this is it's crazy. It's a god and it's a statues of a god. So they, I'm right. sure they took it as something like a Some sort of sign. Amazing. or Right. Yeah, I didn't dig into it much further, but maybe uh, I should have. I really wish you would have. Because <laughs> I have <laughs> you know, now, a lot now of questions. Then two days after our movie premiered on September 24th, Emilio and Gloria Stefan's boat hit and killed a jet skier. I vaguely remember that. I do remember that. Also Ugh. on this day, a TV adaptation of Pride and Prejudice starring Jennifer Eel and Colin Firth debuted on BBC One. Okay, I do actually remember that because yeah. I was super duper into BBC like series. At I that still point. love the BBC. I love on them. September 25th, Virgin Records released David Bowie's 20th studio, studio album titled Outside. Hmm. I don't remember what, that one. Were there big hits on it? I don't, I don't know. I, I didn't don't remember dig the further album. into that either. <laughs> so, Good. My goodness. Like, Great David job, Bowie, host. <laughs> I know. David Bowie and Queen are two that I like. I liked, but I didn't love them at the time. I like them. I appreciate them much more now than I did. Totally back. agree with that. I did not pre appreciate them enough at the time i realize now right i've got so, candles like the religious candles of both david yeah. bowie and freddie mercury though yeah. nice. i guess in order to make up for that totally so speaking of music this week's top 10 songs on the top 40 were number 10 as i lay me down by sophie b hawkins as i lay Her. me down to sleep okay that, go on all right number nine I only bought a, I only want to be with you by Hootie and the Blowfish. I loved that album. I wore that CD Girl, out. I loved that thing so much. So number, much. Number eight, I got five on it by Luniz or Luniz. Don't remember that song at all. Okay. At number seven, Boombastic by Shaggy. I do remember that one. Oh, I do remember that. At number six, I Can Love You Like That by All for One. Number five, A Little Runaway by Janet Jackson. Loved that one. Oh, my God. And number four, Waterfalls by TLC. <gasps> Don't go chasing them. I seen and a rainbow yesterday. But someone is on some calling on. You good? Yeah. No, At thank you for letting three, me do that. <laughs> number three was Kiss from a Rose by Seal. Oh, the pedophile song. We all mm -hmm. love that one. And number two, You Are Not Alone by Michael Jackson. You are not alone. You and can tell it, that my days of listening to um, the musicals had ended at this point. <laughs> right. And at number one, we had A Little Gangsta's Paradise by Coolio. Loved that song. Because that was number one forever. That is one of my favorite songs. Uh, that is one that if it comes on, girl, as soon as that violin starts, <laughs> I can't, I cannot help but boogie. I have right. a funny story about that, actually. Can I tell you? Yes, please. I was at Typhoon, Texas, which is a water park down here. Um, and I um I was 
on a slide and one of my students was there like next to me because <laughs> I was friends with his mom. And so she didn't oh, want to so go this. this is like recent, not like back this in the day. Recently, this is recently. Okay. No, this is like <laughs> two summers ago and we're at the top of the slide and all of a sudden Gangsta's Paradise came on. Girl, I couldn't stop. My <laughs> ass was going. I totally dropped the beat. I was singing every lyric and he turns to me and he was like, Miss Aaron, please stop that. <laughs> like so calm. Please, please stop. Please stop doing that. And I was like, oh, I'm really sorry. <laughs> That's amazing. And it was so good. So this week I have added I Only Want to Be With You by Hootie and the Blowfish to our playlist from the 90s. Yes. What did you yes. add? Okay. Well, full disclosure, <laughs> you sent me the list and I didn't. I thought the movie was in January. That's the first one that popped up. I didn't realize I had to scroll. It's <laughs> not a problem though, because I love all of these songs. Um, originally, I had some others <laughs> that were really January. good <laughs> from January. I'm telling you that January 95 was amazing. <laughs> but anyway, um, so I'm looking right now. I mean, obvious is um, Gangsta's Paradise are already on. No. <gasps> Gangsta's Paradise. Right. 100%, which was actually one of my others from January, was 100% pure love. <laughs> I from love the that song. To the middle and around again. <laughs> I, I was so excited about it. And also, you gotta be, you gotta be, you oh, gotta yeah, be right. strong. You got so good. <laughs> but no, um, Gangsta's Paradise all over that, just awesome. so I can listen to it on our playlist. Well, and so the thing is, the person who is leading the movie that week has to try to choose a song from the movie. If there isn't one, then we can choose a second one. Well, mine Please actually, me. I chose Closer by Nine Thank Inch Nails. Thank you. <laughs> one of the best, I mean, opening credits to a movie that's yep. so disturbing and so good. Yep. Yep. Oh, thank you for choosing yeah, that. So okay. You can find links to these playlists on our website at backwherewebelong.com. We have both an 80s and a 90s playlist on Spotify and Apple Music, so you can subscribe to them there. All right, moving on. Happy Meal, Toy of the Week. This time, it was The Busy World of Richard Scary, which were book characters. Oh. So they had them, it came in the Happy Meal, there was a little character in a car, and then their house that they lived in were in the... In the Happy Meals that week, I was in college, did not get a Happy Meal, I'm pretty sure. Though there were times still where I would buy Happy Meals and I'd get the toys and I'd put them in my dorm. So lovely. Yes. Yeah. Those were just good little collectibles. Yes. And then I got rid of all of them, which totally shouldn't have because you remember they're probably the Monopoly? worth something now. The, the Monopoly, what? the Monopoly that they would do. Yeah. And then they did the documentary about how, what a sham the monopoly thing was oh no i didn't see that oh they got in a lot of trouble <laughs> lot, lots of oh it was a good one it nice. was like called millions i think okay that it was called the most popular toy that year the beanie baby do you remember beanie babies <laughs> oh my did you have beanie yes, babies of course i did <laughs> i did too i had the aaron the green one the irish one aaron gabra oh. Oh, really? That was the one that was the big one I had. And I was like, one day this is going to be worth a million. <laughs> no. Did you have any others? I had a couple of others. I can't remember which ones they were, but yeah, I had a couple. Yeah, I had several. I had some of the bears. I had a multicolored bear and another bear. Like, I think I had the amethyst. They did like the birth month, birthstone ones. Were there non bears? Yeah. They had, I remember had, I had a dog that was really fluffy. Then um, there, there was a whole Disney line of Beanie Babies. I had like Dumbo. I had the little um, monkey Turk from Tarzan. Do you still have some them? More Timon and Pumba. I don't know if I still have them or not. You need but I had tons of them because I thought, oh, these are going to be collectors someday. Yeah. And when are I. Are they? I'm probably. Some of them used to be worth like tons of money. Yeah. So, you know, I need to check. Um, also, our favorite Sweet Valley High was still going strong. I had given mm. up way before this, but this month, book 117 dropped. 
It was yeah, titled Jessica the Genius. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I would venture to guess that book was a lie or all a dream because if you read those books, yes. you know that Jessica was a sociopath oh, and far she from a genius. Was so psychotic. <laughs> oh my but the God. synopsis Total of this book. Narcissist yes. galore. Synopsis of this book reads. Everyone knows that Jessica Wakefield, I can't not do a sassy California You have to. to <laughs> Everyone knows that Jessica Wakefield lives for sun, fun, and guys. So how did she manage an almost perfect score on her SATs? There's a rumor going around Sweet Valley High that Jessica cheated. Of course will she did. Will facing her college boards mean acceptance at the university of her dreams, or will it ruin her chances forever? Todd Wilkins is driving Elizabeth Wakefield crazy because they've been dating for 800 years. <laughs> Now that college basketball scouts are showering Elizabeth's boyfriend with flattery and attention, he thinks he's hot stuff. He even tells Elizabeth she's lucky to have him. Oh, bitch, <laughs> no! <laughs> when Todd's head gets too big to fit through the Wakefield's front door, will Elizabeth send him walking? No, because Elizabeth is a wet rag from hell. And she a is. <laughs> and Jessica does get into her college, as we find out in the college series that they had afterwards. <laughs> right. And isn't it Sweet Valley University or something? Because you, we can't leave SVU. Sweet Valley. Because it would probably disintegrate if they ever left the, they the perimeter of Sweet Valley in any way, shape, or form. Well, I'm not going to lie. I miss the books. Yeah. I miss I've them. I want to get back. I've been thinking about rejoining Kindle Unlimited just so I can download them because they're such quick reads. They're so quick. And it's such a great trip down memory lane. Right. It really Maybe I is. Will resubscribe and download a few to take with me on my road trip next weekend oh my god who reads them oh no, no you're no, saying you would like, read them when you can like, are there me? audiobooks <laughs> oh my god i'm gonna reach out i'm look i want to be the audiobook narrator for sweet valley high <laughs> how amazing would that be that would be so fun so I was going to do an SNL recap this week, but uh -huh. it started, it didn't start this weekend. So the premiere was oh, the following weekend. So right. I'm going to do a rundown of what was on TV this fall season. As I was looking through the schedule, it was very obvious that I was not watching a lot of TV this year because I had no idea what half of these shows were. So I'm just going to touch on a few. Uh -huh. So um, Sunday... Nothing real exciting. We had America's Funniest Home Videos, which was on forever. Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman, which I do remember. And we still had the Sunday night movies on ABC, CBS, and NBC. All had them on Sundays. Uh -huh. um, we had Mad About You. I remember that song yep. on NBC. By now, we had the WB as well. So Pinky and the Brain was on. Um Ellen Cleghorn had a show on Sundays. Mm -hmm. On Monday, we had The Nanny, which was big with Fran Drescher. Um, Murphy Brown was big then as well. And then we had Chicago Hope on Mondays. On Fox, we had Melrose Place, which was a big one on Monday. NBC had The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. And mm. then on UPN, what's, what the fuck was UPN? I think I feel like that was local stuff, but it basically turned into either the WB or it turned okay. into. Uh, yeah, well, in some of these, they have a list as UPN, then they have it listed as WB. So that must be why. Yeah. They just didn't fix this. Um, yeah, because it's the same as like WGN, which was the it. Chicago one, I think. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I think it was just still WB. On Tuesdays, we saw Roseanne was going strong. Um, yes. We had Home Improvement, Coach, yes. which with Craig T. Nelson, which I remember. I loved Coach. It was fun. And NYPD Blue. Um, okay. Never got into that. No. On NBC, we had Wings. Remember that one? And News Radio. <gasps> I love, oh my God, News Radio is one of my favorites and of all time. We're oh, all yes. On, yes. on Tuesdays. On Wednesday, Found we had my the... dad calls him Fraser. <laughs> Fraser. But <laughs> Fraser. Does Fraser eat herbs? He eats herbs and he eats purple basil. Yes. And he, is he a vegan? He is a vegan from Washington. <laughs> <laughs> we just wrapped up my father in a nutshell. <laughs> on Wednesdays on ABC, we had Ellen and the Drew Carey show. We had Grace Under Fire, which I remember that. I do remember that. 
Um, on Fox, Beverly Hills 90210 was still going strong oh, and girl. Party of Five. Never on watched that one. WB, we had Sister Sister, The oh, Williams yeah. Brothers, Unhappily Ever After. It wasn't Unhappily Ever After with like the, there were fairy tale characters living in the modern day. I don't remember that one at all. I don't remember that one. Um, on Thursdays, not anything that I rec- recognize on ABC. Uh, it was CBS, all NBC. Had, on CBS, we had Murder, She Wrote, which was a big one. Um, oh, that's Fox what my was grandmother was single. watching. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, living Single. But then on NBC, we had Friends, The Single Guy. I don't remember The Single Guy. No. Then Seinfeld and yes. Caroline in the City. And then ER. See, I would, I only watched Friends and Seinfeld. Oh, see, I watched Friends and Caroline in the City and ER. You didn't watch Seinfeld? You weren't a Seinfeld? Yeah. No, I didn't get it. But also Thursdays were like, we went to the Peacock, which was top of the cock is what we call it, because there were two levels. And so okay. upstairs, they had hip hop at the top. So Thursday night, hip hop at the top, we'd always go up, go there Thursday night, because most of us didn't have classes on Friday. Well, that's or if adorable. you did, it was like a study hall, so you could sleep in. Um, And then on Fridays, this was the Nothing. big TGIF. Well, we had... On ABC, we had Family Matters, Boy Meets World, Step by Step, Hanging with Mr. Cooper, and then 2020. But I felt like that was toward the younger crowd. Like, I felt like I was getting too old to do Mm -hmm. those. Yeah, TJ, because this was, TJF really started when Full House was on, which was Yes, and that was, yeah, late 80s, because we would watch Full House and then go to the roller rink on a Friday night. Mm -hmm. That was our thing. And then on Fox, we had X-Files at 9 o'clock, which mm -hmm. I did watch. NBC had Unsolved Mysteries and Dateline. Okay. Um, Saturday, ABC, Jeff Foxworthy show, maybe this time, and then ABC Saturday Night at the Movies. CBS had Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman, and Touched by an Angel, and Walker, oh, Texas yes. Ranger. Fox had Martin and Cops and America's Most Wanted, and NBC had Jag, The John Larroquette Show, The Home Court, yeah. and Sisters, which didn't watch any of those. I, I remember all those. I didn't watch any of them. Right. And then the last thing I'm going to cover before we jump into the movie was I found out, I found this website that tells you what happened on some soap operas. This is from Days of Our Lives because I was a huge Days fan then. You need to send me this website. This was only Days of Our Lives. I found some others that have like um, One Life to Live, All My Children. I I want All My Children, One Life to Live. Those are my two. So the week of September 18th through September 22nd, 1995. And I know that Lisa and I also bonded because we would go into our little we would close the doors on our floor of the dorm and we would watch Days of Our Lives at one o'clock. And if one of us had class at that time, then we went to the other's room and we would recap what happened on Days. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. at this time, Hope was held hostage in a warehouse by computer thieves. That was dastardly <laughs> computer thieves. <laughs> Bo later rescued Hope as the warehouse went up in flames. And this is when Billy, Lisa Renna at the time, Yes. Realized Bo still had deep feelings for hope. But then at Billy's suggestion, Bo arranged with Mrs. Horton, you know, Alice Horton, for yes. him and Sean D, his son, to spend some time alone at the Horton cabin, which was always a place to go for a romantic getaway. I mean, I can't tell you how many people rekindled their love at the Horton cabin. <laughs> the stories that couch could tell. But, <laughs> it's much like the country playhouse down here in Texas. <laughs> right. But um, Alice knew that Bo and Sean D were going up there. So she told Hope, because Alice was a little, you know, the old lady, but she liked to meddle and she's trying very hard to um, set Hope and Bo back up. So she told Hope, you know what? You should really go spend the weekend away at the cabin. And oh no, Bo and Sean D are here, but I guess I'm going to have to stay. Well, then Billy realizes that Sean D forgot his fishing pole. So <gasps> she went back up to the cabin. She went to the cabin to give Sean D his fishing pole and found Bo and Hope there. See, and Billy and Bo were dating at this time. So yes. big drama. Uh, but then we had Carrie and Austin. And Aust- um, Sammy had tricked Austin into getting her pregnant. Or so we thought it was Austin's baby, but she had really slept with Lucas and Lucas got her <laughs> pregnant. Um, but Carrie agreed that Austin needed to step up and act as a father. So she broke up with him and told him that she was dating Lucas. And so to drive 
Austin to Sammy because Sammy was crazy and Carrie was the saint. And then we had Tony. He learned he was ill and he had a a reaction to his medication. Don't know what that was about. Then we had Kristen. So our own, um, what's her name? Eileen, who was also on Real Housewives. Oh, yes, yes. She was on Days of Our Lives. She was on... Eileen Davidson, right? mm -hmm. She was on, um, what's that CBS one? Young and the Restless. Okay. I think she's still on there again, but she spent some time on Days as well. And she played Kristen, evil Kristen, and then her wacky sister, Susan, who had glasses and black teeth. But she was dating John at the time because... Marlena thought John was Roman, but then the real Roman came back. And so now John found out he was John Black. So he's dating Kristen. And they came close to finding Tony's diary where he wrote of his plans to destroy their love. Then we had this whole thing at Aramid where Jack and Jennifer, of course, were, you know, on again, off again. But Jennifer was pretending to be Princess Katarina, which was actually Carly, who was a doctor. And so she was dating this dude in Aramid and Jack was trying to um, save her or whatever. Gotta love Days of Our Lives. I, God, I love soaps in general so much. I just think how much fun would it be to be in the writer room? (laughs) Right. Because there are no, there are no limits to what you can come up with. You can do whatever you want. You can make someone possessed. There can be an underground city named, what it was it? Utopia. Utopia. Yes. How original is that? You can have a secret (laughs) twin. You could be schizophrenic. Hello, Vicky Buchanan. Right. You can have a child who you see get hit by a car and die. She comes back. 20 years later. 20 years later. With a Harvard education. With a Harvard (laughs) education. (laughs) Yeah, there's no limit, and I love I, it. There and used they to be play the soaps. long game, mm-hmm. which is what I love so much about it. Mm-hmm. I wish because there used to be the soap opera channel where you could watch. Yes, old, soap dish. Yeah, and they did yep. away with that, but I loved that because General Hospital and Days of My, Days of Our Lives at this time were my big ones that I watched. Mine were all my children in one life to live. Those were my big ones. General Hospital, I did, and then I I left it. When Robert Scorpio left, mm. I didn't want to watch anymore. If I couldn't mm. have Robert Scorpio, I was done. Got it. All right. Well, how about we take a break and then we'll come back and talk about our movie? When retiring police detective William Somerset tackles a final case with the aid of newly transferred David Mills, they discover a number of elaborate and grisly murders. They soon realize they are dealing with a serial killer who is targeting people he thinks represent one of the seven deadly sins. Crazy movie. I had not watched this in probably a good 20 years. It had been a while since I saw it. Like I remembered the deaths. I didn't remember the order. That they took place. Yeah, yeah. And I, I love this movie. How creepy! I don't. I could. I. It's going to be a while before I can watch it again because it really, really is unsettling. It's so fucked up. It is so unsettling. It's a perfect way to describe it. Yeah. From the opening credits, where they're using closer, mm-hmm. um, and you kind of get a preview of what this guy's doing. Yeah. In that, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've watched this movie. I don't know what it says about me. <laughs> Tons of times. I'm and quite a few you. times in the last, because I watched it in October when with our old podcast, we would, mm-hmm. you know, and still, even without that podcast, every October, you and I watch scary movies. Right. Which we will and do so for I this watched, one as well. Obviously. So I had watched seven. And then it was one of those, like, if Adam was playing his video game and I was upstairs and I'm like, oh, I want to watch a movie. You know what? I'm going to put seven back. Because <laughs> it's comforting. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't understand what's wrong with me. Something definitely, this is a marker of something that when I die, they'll be like, well, obviously she watched, yeah. seven, you know, seven, like 20 <laughs> times a year. But yes, so this is one. I mean, I loved this movie when it came out, saw it in the theaters and have watched it. I have watched it since. Yeah. Many times. So this was after Silence of the Lambs. 
And I feel like that really kind of set the precedent because after Silence of the Lambs, we got a lot of serial killer movies. Yes, a lot of just like psychological Mm -hmm. thrillers. Yeah, the slasher was kind of done for a while. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until Scream that there was a resurgence of the slashers. But Seven was released on September 22nd, 1995. It starred Brad Pitt as Detective Mills and Morgan Freeman as Somerset. The detectives hunting a serial killer known only as John Doe, played by Kevin Spacey. And then we had Gwyneth Paltrow, who played Brad Pitt's wife, Tracy. Seven was directed by David Fincher, who also directed a ton of things, but he did the serial killer movie Zodiac, about the Zodiac Killer, which is another one that I love, but I haven't seen since I think I saw it in the theater with you and Brandon, if I'm not, or maybe you. Probably. I forget when it came out. And he also did Mindhunter on Netflix. That series was incredible. I didn't watch the final series. When I was putting my notes together, I realized I don't think I ever watched the season. Was it two or three? It was season two. They only did two seasons. And through the whole thing, they're setting up BTK. Mm -hmm. And then they stopped doing it. Yeah. We never got BTK. Which I don't I'm understand so why. Did it, was it because Netflix it was canceled schedules. it? No, okay, no, it gotcha. was never, can, it was like a high rating one, never canceled. But it was like David Fincher was the one, just like with, you know, last the week we the covered Truth or, well, last week we covered Truth or Dare. Mm-hmm. He was supposed to direct that. Right. And then he pulled out of that. So I don't know what David Fincher is about, if that's something that's normal. Yeah. Right. But I don't, yeah, I don't know that Mindhunter will ever be back. And it was so good. Mm-hmm. He also did Gone Girl. And then he did The Girl oh. with a Dragon Tattoo and was supposed to do that entire trilogy. And I loved his, because he was, he stuck to the book so closely with The Girl with a Dragon Tattoo. Loved it. And he was supposed to do the other two movies, but then got involved in, I think it was Gone Girl. And uh-huh. then when he was done with Gone Girl, um, what's his name? James Bond dude. D- Daniel Craig? Daniel Craig, yeah. He was tied up with a Bond movie so he couldn't come back to reprise his role and then or reprise his role and then Rooney Mara who was the girl with the dragon tattoo was busy with something so they just scrapped the rest of the series which is too bad. Yeah. But the movie was written by Andrew Kevin Walker, who also wrote Hideaway, based on a Dean Koontz novel starring Jeff Goldblum and Alicia Silverstone, which I remember being very disappointed in because I'd read the book and I loved it. And they aged the girl and they just changed it, all the Hollywood bullshit. He also wrote 8mm, which starred Nicolas Cage, which is about Mm -hmm. snuff films, and it made me want to scrub my eyes out of my head after watching it. He also did Sleepy Oh, that was a really hard one. Yeah. I have not seen that one since I saw it in the theater. No, that's I haven't I would seen that and I haven't seen, do you remember One Hour Photo? Yeah. I haven't, those are two movies that like yep. creeped me out enough. Yeah, I have no desire, mm-hmm. I'm good. He also did Sleepy Hollow with the Johnny Depp I and Christine Ricci. I loved Ricci, that I version. Loved. Yeah. yeah. Fun fact here, he also played the dead dude at the first crime scene in the movie. So he was the one laying on the floor. We never saw his face. He was a yeah. dude that his wife had shot him. Yeah. yeah. We always see his butt and his underwear. Oh, how funny. He got a nice butt. <laughs> I don't think I could even pick him out of a lineup. Well, no, because they never showed his face. He only saw his ass. So. <laughs> yeah. This is David Fincher? No, not. Um, oh. The dude who wrote it, Andrew oh, Kevin Walker. Oh, the screenwriter. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking I could never pick David Fincher out of a lineup. I oh. don't <laughs> think I know what he looks like. But no, I definitely wouldn't be able to pick screenwriter out. Never mind. Yeah. The film was rated R, not surprisingly. Music was done by Howard Shore. It had a budget of $33 million and made $13,949,807 opening weekend. It would go on to make over $100 million domestically and mm-hmm. over two million two hundred twenty-seven thousand internationally with a worldwide box office of $327,333,559. Damn. It was the seventh highest grossing film of 1995. Okay. How funny. The seventh highest. (laughs) How crazy. (laughs) Right. That's nuts. It has an 82% certified fresh critic score on Rotten Tomatoes and a 95% audience score. I looked through some of the critic things. (laughs) Gene Siskel Gene Siskel said it's worth seeing if you can look past the gruesome details. Michael Wilmington of the Chicago Tribune said, unfortunately, most of the scenes in Seven are unlikely, which means that by the end of the movie, the duo is battling not just an insane killer, but an off-the-wall screenwriter. 
<laughs> Jamie Bernard of the New York Daily News said this was a negative one, which I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? There's none of the humor that takes the sting out of slasher movies. And certainly none of the psychology and depth that made The Silence of the Lambs such an intellectual thriller. This wasn't a slasher movie, dude. So. No, but maybe he's saying like slasher movies at least have this. Silence of the Lambs had this and this right. didn't cover either. And I feel like psychologically it covered quite a bit. It was I disturbing as fuck. I thought it was fantastic psychological. I mean, I would put it next to Silence of the Lambs. As far mm-hmm. as psychological thrillers go, this was a good one. I mean, there were some things that were a reach, but you need to suspend disbelief that some dude had, you know, could orchestrate some of these murders to happen in a certain way, especially the one dude that he had tied up for over a year and was starving. I Um, mean, this guy was in for the long game. Right, right. Obviously, you have to suspend disbelief there. You do a little bit, a little bit, but I would think the most successful serial killers from what I... I mean, there were some that were seemed a little more spontaneous that did really well. I mean, like Ted Bundy, mm-hmm. I think, was a little more spontaneous. Right. But BTK, I feel, mm-hmm. was was in it for the long game. And, and it's Green River. those and the Green River Killer. It's mm-hmm. those that plan in such detail mm-hmm. that will get away with it for a much longer time. And I feel was that one that I covered on Six Degrees that he was the gay dude, but he was killing young straight men and he would yes. like, stick stuff up their butt and everything. Yes. Like, so it looks like a hate crime of some mm-hmm, sort. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There, I'm, it's those that go against the norm that are yeah. so hard to catch. Because they and t- so t- this took forever guy, to find this, that dude that I just said, because they yeah. had no clue. Because he, the, he made it look like it was one, the profile look, made it look like it was someone else, not mm-hmm. a white guy. Right. And it was only because he got pulled over for driving erratically and he had a dead body in his front seat yes. that they found out that he it was He would him. never, it would never have been known. Right. I mean, that's kind that's, so I, I do feel like, I mean, this was a stretch with starving the guy. That was a big stretch. Right. But and I having think each that body it's more found on like, like each day of the, the week order. It went over seven days. Yeah. And so, because it started on a Monday, ended on a Sunday to have it perfectly executed i mean but he also knew exactly who was going to be doing it and you knew that i mean if someone's going to figure it out figure out all the intellectual stuff behind it Mm -hmm. morgan freeman's going to figure it out right right so i I just remember with that first one sorry with that first one with the shards and him yeah. figuring it out figuring out where the shards came from which Mm -hmm. gave him another clue Mm -hmm. that that's a stretch of doing that in like a day Right, right. So yeah, weird. I feel like this would have taken place over a few months than just a week. Easily, easily, yeah. Another positive review came from Desmond Ryan of the Philadelphia Inquirer, who said, The reason to see seven, which is decidedly not for the faint of stomach, is not mm-hmm. for the punishment of sin, but the many virtues of Freeman's contribution, which I can agree with that. <sighs> this is Jay, one of Morgan Freeman's, I mean, yeah, this and Shawshank mm-hmm. put right next to each other. Jay Boyer from the Orlando Sentinel gave it a positive review, but said that the plot was familiar and ridiculously gimmicky. Do you agree? No. I didn't think it was familiar or, I mean, it depends on your definition of gimmicky, I guess, because I can see where. Isn't every movie gimmicky? Right. I mean, every. I mean, what does that even mean? Premise, right. Familiar. I don't think we'd seen anything like this. A seven deadly sin serial killer. that, That does not makes sense and i'm really confused by those two words familiar and gimmicky because with if it's a serial killer movie this is exactly what you go through the Mm -hmm. investigation and then the crimes that are like how uh, yeah of course that's familiar that's it's a murder investigation and then gimmicky i mean don't horror films that's the whole thing with scream is like there is a formula to it and that's why you go see them and that's exactly why you go see them. Speaking of Scream, have you seen the latest one? I haven't. It's is it so good? it's so good. Like I liked it. I liked the Scream Five or whatever. That was the mm-hmm. one. This one is even better. Like it's brutal. Like nonstop action. Okay. It was. I loved it. I absolutely loved I it. I Need to watch it. So, do you remember when and where you first saw this movie? 
I know I saw it in the theaters. Mm -hmm. I'm almost positive. I saw it with my friend, Chris, Mm -hmm. um, our friend, Chris, that we know Mm -hmm. I'm almost because I saw every movie with him back during that time. So I'm sure that I saw it with him. I was completely shocked Mm -hmm. by every death in the movie. I don't even think I knew the deadly sins, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, so it was fun. Like, I know what we're going to do later in this episode. It was fun watching it just being like, Oh God, I could see that. (laughs) I could totally see me being a target (laughs) on some of these, but I, I loved it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I I remember it was, it was in the theater. Yeah. I saw it in the theater. It wasn't opening weekend. No, because it took a while for this movie to take off. And so it was once the buzz was around. And I remember Lisa and I went with some of her friends, I think her roommate and and then some of their friends that they knew. And then they invited me to go to the theater to watch this. And I was sitting by Lisa. And when the dude. The sleeping dude. No, it was no. the dude that had that. Well, the sleeping dude scared us when he like woke yeah, up. Yeah, when he was But shot. we got the giggles because we were just so disturbed. It, was the, it wasn't right. like we thought it was funny. We got the nervous, disturbed giggles when they showed that the dude was wearing that knife thing on his dick and he was forced to fuck the sex worker. And when they that showed it. That was the worst one. We just looked at each other and we started giggling. And we couldn't stop laughing. And people in the theater were so pissed. And then they flipped back to that picture again, which made us burst into hysterics again. My so gosh, we almost, I know. And it was one of those, like, we, and we were, we knew we shouldn't be laughing. Because of it wasn't, all scenes. But we kept laughing because we knew we shouldn't have been laughing. Of course. <laughs> of course. And then like a couple of weeks later, we went and saw Copycat. And oh my God. Started laughing our asses off when he said, Show me your squirrel covers. <laughs> oh <laughs> Called God. Your squirrel covers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, that's so gross. Got, yeah. So that's where I was. But that in the theater scene in Corvallis, of Oregon. all scenes. I know. Which is Odell. the most disturbing because we were already so like <sighs> just disturbed by this movie. And then they show the that, knife. Oh there. my God. And yeah. And that poor man traumatized for mm-hmm. life. Yep. So I want to discuss all of the deaths. Yes. We'll look at the seven oh, sins. Okay. So we had, and spoiler alert, if you've not seen this, there are going to be spoilers, which there always are in all yeah. of these movies that we discuss. So first we had Gluttony, <laughs> which was the grossest one of all of them because what had happened yes. was the serial killer had tied this dude to a chair in his kitchen. Dude was, he's a bigger dude, overweight. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He made him eat spaghetti. He put a bucket underneath him so he could pee and, I guess, shit into the bucket. Yep. But he held a gun to his head and made him eat spaghetti until basically his insides burst and killed him. I would have been like, just shoot me. Right. I would just shoot me. That's the thing that I kept thinking through all of these deaths. I'm like, in a way, because one of the seven deadly sins is pride. Right. And I feel like a lot of these, there's a sense of pride attached to them, which is why they didn't just say, okay, then fine, just shoot me. Because I don't understand it with this one. This one, I feel, would have been one of the most painful Mm -hmm. deaths. And I would have been like, I'm definitely on my way to a very slow, painful death. Just fucking shoot me. Right. Right. Yeah. I would have given up and just like, fuck, I'm going to die anyway. I'm not going to die yeah. in pain. So but just I shoot doubt me. he would have like just put him out of his misery. Mm-hmm. It would have been another slow death. Mm-hmm. He would have shot him in the stomach or something. Oh, God. I yeah. don't, I don't even know. Odell, this, God, this movie is so disturbing. I cannot <laughs> yeah, believe watch I've it watched it like 20 times. <laughs> <laughs> then we had Greed with the lawyer. Uh huh. Who was forced to cut off a piece of his skin, like a, basically pound of flesh. a plant of flesh. Yes. Um, that's another one where I'm like, oh, you're going to make me cut off my skin and make me bleed to death. I'm not going to do it. So there had shoot to me have been or cut it off yourself. The only thing I can think of is that there had to have been 
such a bigger threat. I mean, because he was psychotic Mm -hmm. looking and everything, how calm he was and everything. I don't, there had to have been like a little more to them making them actually do it. Or this was just part of the suspending disbelief, right? you know? Yeah. Cause I, I'm putting myself in these positions. I'm like, yeah, I would have just said, shoot me. I don't care. I'm going to die. So if you have something on me and you're going to release it to the world, I don't care. I'm not going to be here to deal with that. And that one, he had the wife. There could have been Mm -hmm. a threat of you don't do it. Then this is what happens, you know, Yeah. which I know Adam would be like, well, okay, what do I have to do? You know, but then at the same time, I'd be like, if you're psychotic enough to do this, you're going to kill her anyway. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Mm. The next one that I could believe, well, I could believe that because this that guy didn't have a choice really mm. was sloth. He was tied to a bed oh. and just slowly starved to death mm-hmm. until he mm-hmm. died over the course of a year. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he was slowly, slowly killed. Um, though he was still alive when they found him. But I mean, he was... May as well. He was, he was mean, eventually going to die. There was no saving him. Right. But I feel like when you're tied up to a bed, you can't move. You can't feed yourself. You're just right. laying there at the mercy of some other person. Yeah, right. That's that was realistic to me. I can see that. Yeah. I can't see him being alive still after a year. No, because it sounds like he was giving him like he slowly just enough restricted to his calories. Yeah. Yeah. Then we had the most disturbing Mm-mm. lust, which was the knife. That fuck. apparently made you crack up. Oh my <laughs> God. I can't it even. It was so shocking though, because you're like, what happened? Did you laugh during Schindler's List, Odell? No, I did not. Okay, okay thank you. <laughs> um, but <sighs> where we had the sex worker at a sex club and he had forced this guy. This is another one where I'm like, you are going to force me to kill someone else. Like, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to strap a knife on my crotch and then have sex with this woman. Not going to do it. Regardless of, that was another one where I've been like, just fucking shoot me. I don't care what you do. I'm not doing that. Then we had pride, Mm -hmm. which he cut off our nose, cut off your nose, bite your face. Mm-hmm. He put a phone in one hand and then pills in the other so she could glued she could them, either, didn't yeah. she? Didn't he? Yeah. And he could either call for help and then she would live, but live without a nose, which I feel right. like could have done something with plastic surgery, or she could take pills and kill herself. Right. And so the pride was, I guess, and I don't know if she actually took the pills and killed herself or if he just killed her anyway and just did this right. as a setup. It wasn't really clear. Yeah. I kind of took it as she did kill herself. Mm-hmm. That's kind of how I took it. Because I guess he was so strict about making sure that the sin was carried out exactly the mm-hmm. way the sin was. I feel like had she not killed herself, which would have been. He would have forced it down her throat. He would have, or else he just would have found another victim. Yeah. And then we have the big twist. He turns himself in. <sighs> and he makes them drive him out. He says, I won't show you the next two victims, but you have to until you drive me to the certain location, Mm -hmm. which it felt weird that they were in this desert. Right. But they came from the city where it rained pretty much every fucking day. I'm like, did it only rain in the city and not in the desert near? And it seemed like they were in the desert. They were in New York City. But it, that's the thing. They never specify what city they're in. They do. The, the All the um, trivia that I read was Fincher did this because he didn't want, he wanted this to be able to be any big city. He just wanted to feel dark and dreary. Did he come from New York City? He came from New York. That's yeah. what it is. Okay. But so we don't really know where location. he is. Right. But what's weird is like you get the, because it feels like New York City. This yeah, dark, for sure. dreary, rainy, populous place. But then all of a sudden they're in this really dry, desolate, mountainous area to look more yeah. like Nevada. Maybe it was more, yeah, maybe it was more like they were in Chicago, like that type of maybe. area and going, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. 
but it was weird that because like it didn't feel like they drove all day they drove for a while like they left right. in the afternoon and then they were there by seven o'clock for the delivery right but it just seemed like the landscape was too much of a drastic change. It didn't feel like, because typically when you go from a big city, you slowly transition. There are some suburbs. Right. And then it gets a little more desolate further out. So I don't mm-hmm. know. It just seemed like too much of a stark contrast for me. Anyway. It was. We get but there. But I was just so exciting to hear him. I was so excited to hear like him talk and right. kind of start to explain. Because I had Why no idea this. where it was going. Yeah. So he finally admits that he envied Mills. He envied his life, his life with his wife Mm -hmm. and blah, blah, blah. And then, so he was envy, but then we have wrath. And here's where the big twist happens. We get this delivery dude driving out. Morgan Freeman stops him. He has a box. What's in the box? What's in the box? (laughs) He says that's like when people pass him, that's the number one thing he hears. (laughs) What's in the box? (laughs) (laughs) So... Um, turns out he had killed Mills' wife, cut off her head, put the head in the box, and delivered it. So Mills was wrath, and yep. he had to kill the dude, John Doe, who envied him. John Doe knew that he would. Mm-hmm. Which With would carry out all of the and sins. his, yeah. Yeah, and it was obvious. I mean, he was a hothead that he was yes. going to do this. Would you have killed him? God, it would have been hard not to. Oh, hands down, I would have. I I mean... I don't care if I bought I don't him, know but... with Morgan Freeman sitting there saying this is exactly what he wants. And if I stop to think, like, if I finish this, then he succeeds. Right. You know, I feel like if anyone can talk me down, it would be Morgan Freeman. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> you know? So... I know I would want to. I don't know if I actually could, though. Yeah. I don't know, because I'm such a vengeful motherfucker. Like, when, yeah, you when I get to that point, like, I'm pretty easygoing, but then I hit a point where I'm just done. Yeah. And I feel like if I had opened that box and it was someone that I loved, like I was in, like, they were my life. And yeah. I found out that, like, if I wanted kids and that not only did he kill that her, but was also the... pregnant. And he's the one who told Mills that she mm-hmm. was pregnant because he hadn't known yet. Yep. So he took all of these things, like my all of my happiness away from me. Right. It would have been hard for me not to have done it. It would have been very hard to not do it, to want to fly off the handle. But again, if Morgan Freeman was there talking to me, <laughs> I would at least stop and be like, Okay, explain why I shouldn't do this. <laughs> you know, it would right. be, and that would be the biggest fuck you he could have given to this guy. Mm-hmm. Like True. the biggest, which would have made for an incredible ending that the guy didn't succeed. And to see what would have happened to him and him, it, like just to have seen his reaction mm-hmm. that he wasn't right about this one right, would have been amazing. It would have been. And I would have regretted shooting him. So I would have thought it through right. more after the fact. I wish I that I he would be would in prison knowing mm-hmm. that he was unsuccessful. And then I would go torment mm-hmm. him every fucking day. Exactly. But yeah, I think at the at the moment I would have been too distraught in the moment it would have been very difficult to not Mm -hmm. very difficult all right let's take a quick break and then we'll come back for some fun stuff and close out okay one thing i noticed did you notice this what that the leather shop where he made the harness with the knife dick yes was named wild bill's leather (gasps) <gasps> no <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's what they found the receipt and then they went there and it said wild bill which was like oh that's How a little throwback brilliant to is that. Lines, right i also oh found some fun facts about the movie all these come directly from imdb new line cinema executives originally hated the film's ending they didn't want it to end that way but brad pitt okay. refused to make the film if they changed the ending How did they want it to end? I don't know. It didn't say. Hmm. Brad Pitt fell. Okay, interesting. Yeah. He fell while filming the scene where he's chasing John Doe in the rain. Mm -hmm. His arm went through a car windshield. It required surgery to repair some tendons or something. 
but the accident oh worked it was worked into the script and coincidentally the original script called for him to be injured during that sequence anyway so they just oh that's <laughs> thanks brad <laughs> um also i learned that denzel washington was initially supposed to play mills but he <gasps> turned it down because he felt the film was too dark and evil, but then he later regretted his decision after saw, seeing a screening of the film. Wait, Mil- Brad Pitt? No, Denzel no. Washington was supposed to play Brad Pitt's part. So it was supposed yeah, to be Morgan Freeman, what... Denzel Washington. Okay. Yeah. Oh. But he turned it down because he felt like the script was too dark. Yeah, I don't know if I that? could see Denzel in that role. I think I could. I think it would have changed it. It would have, but I I don't know. Maybe I'm just having a hard time because I loved Brad Pitt in that role so much. Honestly, you know what it is? It's that Brad Pitt comes across as kind of a dumbass and a hothead in it. Yeah, yeah. I I can't believe that that about Denzel Washington. He's very intelligent. He would read the books and not the Cliff's Notes. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. You know, I just, that's what I don't see. I don't see him being a hothead in a movie. No, and I think this was right about the training day time uh, yes. after this wasn't it i was right I around was this time in that. yeah i feel yeah. like it was after this because i feel like i was in texas when i saw it okay um another good one um yeah but, oh god that was that was mm-hmm. 2001 so okay. it was yeah it was long after six years later yeah so brad pitt considers this one to be one of the most perfect films he's ever made absolutely he also said that Gwyneth Paltrow's character is the only sunshine we have in the film, which. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Probably all that vagina steaming that she does. <laughs> this is probably, probably pre steamed vag. <laughs> <laughs> and then David Fincher said on the DVD commentary that he felt bad for the actor who had to wear all of the hot, heavy, gluttony prosthetics. Yeah. So to compensate, he made him well endowed. <laughs> <laughs> we oh, do get a glimpse yes, of the, the John. Glimpse. I don't really pay. I didn't really pay attention because I, I do kind of hide that. my eyes on that part because it's just so it's, the veins like, are that sticking makes out. Me and, yeah. never want to eat again. Honestly. Right. So let's say this movie happening in real life. Okay, you're one of the victims. Oh God, which deadly sin would be your demise? Mm -hmm. I I lean more toward envy. Like I envy others, right? Mm -hmm. I lean more toward that. Um, Yeah, more than, I mean, definitely not greed. Gluttony, I could be there. I love Mm -hmm. me some good snacks. (laughs) Um, Pride, no. Lust. 20 years ago, yes. Right. Absolutely. I mean, I'm lustful. Like, it depends on your description of lust. I mean, where is it? Your yeah. Definition. Like, like, I'm not a, a you look sex at someone worker like, hey, who constantly. Right. I'm not constantly out fucking to get around. it. Right. Yeah. Right. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. I would say envy probably more than anything because okay. I do envy like people who are wealthier than I am, people who are able to go on these amazing vacations and have these amazing houses and all of that. And I, right. yeah, definitely envy. What about you? Yes. Yeah, I think, I don't know. Like I can see a little bit like gluttony. I used to just eat like my nerves and my feelings when yeah, I get nervous my, or when my I brain my was going, like I, would just, I had to be snacking on something while I was walking and thinking. So, but I've changed mm-hmm. that habit. Um, I'm not greedy. Um, sloth. I feel like there have been mm-hmm. times when I've been just like a bump on a log where I just sit on the couch you all the time. What? You, it's not like it lasts for weeks at a time or anything right. like that. And sometimes we deserve to like just have a day where we sit. <laughs> right. But there were times when I would just like lay on the couch. That's all I did on weekends. Mm-hmm. I would get mm-hmm. up. I would lay on the couch. That was it. Might get up to pee. Mm-hmm order something so but that was usually like you know a day here a day there but then during the week you were working and you were doing right. rehearsals at night and you were painting right. sets and so i would i don't think anyone would ever describe you as oh <laughs> right. you no know, dal doesn't do anything but lays on a couch <laughs> very slothful 
Um, lust, not, I don't sleep around. I mean, the, I have lustful thoughts when I see someone. Of course. But it's not like a constant thing. That's pride, human. I do have some pride in that. And I feel like I've spent so much time as a, when I was younger being bullied and being told that I wasn't good enough for something. Then now right. I feel like when someone tries to tell me I'm not good enough, the pride kicks in. You're going to, yeah. To that. Not super bad. I don't envy a lot, but I think wrath would be mine. Not that I'm yeah. like a wrathful person, but like I said, if I get pushed to the edge, yeah. I'm pretty laid back until a point where I'll just stand up for myself. And depending on what you did, I might make your life hell <laughs> yeah. if you fuck me over well enough. Yeah. Can I right. tell you something real quick? Yes, please. I saw there's a show on Netflix. There's I Am a Killer, which uh-huh. was great. Uh-huh. And then they made I Am a Stalker. And as I was watching I, I Am a that. Stalker, yeah, there were some things that I was like, I that's stalking. <laughs> <laughs> Rap. <laughs> there were a couple of things. So yeah, I can see um like the wrath coming in where it's just like never i mean like i feel like you would go and go and go i mean as far as wanting to like i don't see you ever killing anyone or anything like that obviously but just making their lives a living hell i can totally which by the way it might be considered stalking i'm just warning you (laughs) apparently i've been stalking for like 25 years now (laughs) well i'm really good about cutting people off like you get to a point i just cut you off but if you keep coming at me yeah after i've reached that point I'm going to do something not through murder or anything, but I'm going to make sure that you know that you've hit the wall yes. and we're done. We done. All right. Last fun thing. Mary Shagkill. Now, we're okay. going to look at three Who are you people. Picking? Well, it's going to be in two different, two different versions. So we're going to think of them like the actors, but then also as their characters, oh. just to see if it changes. Okay. So looking at tell you right now, it's not going to change at all. Go on. Brad Pitt, Morgan Mm -hmm. Freeman, and Kevin Mm -hmm. Spacey. Oh, I'm marrying Morgan Freeman. I'm going to shag the shit out of Brad Pitt and I'm going to kill Kevin Spacey. Same here. Yeah. Because I just want Morgan Freeman. Same with the characters. (laughs) Yeah. I want Morgan Freeman to read me stories at night. Thank you. That's exactly what I was (laughs) thinking is I just, can you just sit down and read me to sleep? Right. That is what I want. If I've had a rough day and I'm just really frazzled, really stressed, I would love to come home to Morgan Freeman saying, sit down. Tell me what happened today. (laughs) I would love that. And he's very smart. Yes. And I think very logical. So I feel like financially he'd be on top of the bills, <laughs> taxes, <laughs> all of that stuff. Like he would, I think he's more of an adult than I am. So that would be lovely. He would fix, like he would totally be in the father figure out. Come on now. Totally. We would listen to George Michael all the time. And then he would just read me books. Yeah. And watch intelligent movies mm-hmm. and be able to like give me a different perspective. It'd right. be amazing. It would be like so fulfilling. He's just a very calming force. Yes. Yeah. And then Brad yeah. Pitt, girl, I would yeah. climb on that so fast. Even yeah. now, Thelma and Louise, Brad Pitt, it does not matter. Yeah, he's kind of skinny, but I would definitely, out of the three of them, he would be the and one. Dumb and the, but he's not, I would want Fight Club, Brad Pitt. Yes, yes. Give but, me Fight Club. And Brad current Pitt. Brad Pitt, like with the long hair, he kind of looks I, greasy and kind of stinky. He does, but you know what? <laughs> stank all over me, buddy. I'd be fine. <laughs> Rub your stink would on me. I'd be fine. <laughs> and Kevin Spacey, character or person. Yeah, he just seems kind of pompous. Yeah, especially after the whole. If you had asked me that 20 years ago, it may have been different. But after everything now. he did. Yeah. No. Agreed. It would have been much harder to answer 20 years ago. Yes, for sure. So first line, last line. Yes. First line of the movie came from a cop who said, neighbors heard them screaming at each other for two hours. So that was when they were at the crime scene. Mm -hmm. Last line. Morgan Freeman read a quote from a book and then he yes. closed out with, I agree with the second part. I wish I'd written down what the quote was because it'd probably make more sense. <laughs> Damn it, Odell. I didn't. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to look at it right now. All right. Um, Just to. It was Walt quote. Whitman, right? Uh, Walt, 
Whitman um, seven. Okay. Um, was it, I think, a few heroic actions? No, wait, that's not it. Maybe it I wasn't Walt Whitman. Maybe I'm thinking Walt Whitman because that was in a book I read recently. Maybe. <laughs> oh, the world is a, uh, Ernest Hemingway. Yes. The world is a fine place and worth fighting for. I agree says, with the I think this, I, Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Ooh, that's that's a really good quote. Oh, that just gave me chills because he's he's not saying that the world is a fine place, but he's saying it is worth fighting for. And that just, oh, I don't know why I'm having like a visceral reaction. Something <laughs> happened. <laughs> okay, we're not going to worry about that. I'm going to go watch right. Morgan Freeman. I'm going to go watch Shawshank. All right. Or we can just go back to the old, old Morgan, Morgan Freeman and watch uh, 321 Contact. Wasn't that? Or Electric Company. Oh, electric, electric company. company. Yeah. Oh, okay. I might go back there for a little <laughs> bit after seven. We need a palate cleanser. All right. Let's um do some trivia. I pulled some from my oh, 90s deck. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Got to get my timer. I hope get this is the right yes. button for the timer. Okay. First one. Hands up. Remember, we have to oh, do yes. hands up. <laughs> no Googling. Um. What you don't know is I have Adam right behind me crouching down. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Go on. The search engine Google, which launched in 1998, was originally called what? Headache, oh, uh -huh. search face, or back rub? What was the first one? Headache, search face, or back rub? Number two. search face? Yeah. Nope. It was, it was one. Back rub. Back rub. Oh, it was three. Okay, I wouldn't have gotten it right no matter what. Why would why better. would you call a search engine back rub? Like I feel like headache. Yeah, that makes no sense. Makes a little more sense. Make search face. I really makes love me giggle. search face. Right. <laughs> That's what it should be. All right. How many kids did Iowa mom Bobby McKay give birth to in November 1997? An event that put her on the cover of Time. Uh, seven. Yes. They are the first surviving set of septuplets to be born. Crazy is not seven. Go on. <laughs> All right. Ready? Mm -hmm. What celestial bodies did astronomers detect orbiting outside of our solar system for the first time in 1991? Um, stars. Black holes. Black holes. What's your final answer? Yeah. Planets. There were three uh, Earth-sized planets orbiting a dying star in the constellation of Virgo. I do remember that. Damn it. That seems so weird. I never would have thought planets. Of course, you're going to find planets in this. Planets and stars yeah. would have been my last thoughts. Okay. I'm Okay, yeah. Um, how many is that? One, two, three. Okay, we have two more. Mm -hmm. What writer of The Odd Couple also wrote Lost in Yonkers, which won both a Tony for Best Play and a Pulitzer Prize in 1991? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Uh, oh, come on. What is it? Neil Simon. Yeah, of course. All right, he last also one. wrote, you're playing our, they're playing our song, which I did in 1985. <laughs> it was the same thing. Damn it. Go on. Okay. Final one. Mm -hmm. What atmospheric first person, blah, blah, blah. let me restate that. What atmospheric first person puzzle solving game was the best selling computer game of the 1990s? Um, an uh, ast asteroid. Tetris. What's your what? final answer? Yes. Missed. What? Did you ever play that? I don't know. No. I don't okay. You that. just wait, Odell, until my next pack. <laughs> Dude, you're, you're, you're already like eight points ahead of me. I don't care. I want <laughs> to be 20. <laughs> I literally grabbed two cards. That was a hard one. I know. See, I don't do very good. Well, I just, obviously, I don't do very good with anything, but I, especially the 90s trivia. Yeah. So I wasn't really, I wasn't watching much. I wasn't, I, I think I listened to more music than anything. That's when I did start paying a little more attention to what was going on around me. So I might be better. The 80s, that's where when it's stuff outside of, 
I mean, I can. Yeah, I can tell you. Hopefully, I remember. It's got to be a big event. Hopefully, I can remember. It has to be TV or movie, TV or music related for me. Right. If it's like. Yeah. All right. Before we sign off, we need to spin the wheel. So this time I have chosen 15 movies that I would like to watch. Mm-hmm. Aaron's going to stick these 15 movies into the wheel. Mm-hmm. And we're just going to spin it once. Oh, just once? Because, yeah, because I and get the these one are all that movies. we're watching. Yep, these are all okay. movies that we want to watch. So we're just okay. going to spin the whatever the first one is. That's the one are you ready? Choose. I'm ready. Here we go. All right. What is it? What's it gonna be? Oh, you were so close. Uh, where the boys are, 84. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> Can I tell you what was right next to it? The pirate movie. You know this. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> See, I'm afraid right. of watching the pirate movie. Because it's going to be terrible and I'm going to hate it. No, you've already decided that you're going to hate it. That's the thing. I haven't you have already, decided yes, it. Yes, you have. Every time it comes up, you're like, oh, that movie. Oh, my God. So you are going to come in and shit all over me, regardless of whether you're, you're not no, going to enjoy it because no, you've already I'm decided calm down. that you don't like it. You are That's getting gonna feisty. <laughs> See, now when I don't like it because it's a shitty movie, you're going to be like, well, you decided you weren't going to like it. No, I've already decided that you've decided. So I feel like I have to come in with my guns blazing. Anyway, Where the Boys Are 84 <laughs> is really fun, though. I've never heard of it. Or it seen has it. Um, Lorna Luft is in it. Oh, okay. And Lisa Hartman. Who oh, my married gosh. Who married Black and Lynn Holly yes? Johnson. There are these girls who go to Florida for spring break. And one of the rich Southern girls, her cousin is this amazing composer Camden Roxbury <laughs> oh and God. Lisa Hartman doesn't want to go because she wants to stay home and study but she loves Camden Roxbury so her, her friend's like I'll set you up with my cousin and of course there's this other boy that she meets there it's cheesy okay. 80s I haven't seen it in years but um okay yeah all right so where the boys are 84 in two weeks next week the 80s classic Saint Elmo's Fire which I'm looking forward to seeing yes. again, it's been years since i've seen i that, don't so. think i've ever seen that if i have it's been clips yeah it's been a long time i don't think i've seen it since probably college if yeah. then so okay. all right we'll see you next week y'all have a good week Thanks so much for listening. Please be sure to tell all of your friends about us, especially any fellow Gen Xers. And don't forget to follow us on social media and your favorite podcast app. And be sure you're set to auto download so you never miss an episode. And while you're there, leave us a five-star rating. Don't forget to visit backwherewebelong.com to gain access to our ultimate playlists, pick up some merch, and do a deeper dive into all of our episodes. Thanks again. We'll see you next week.